Hello folks, welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how I made these copper battery strips with built-in cell level fusing. As most of you know, I build my own batteries for my custom EV projects and I have a couple of projects planned that are going to use lithium NMC cells which are more energy dense but also less stable than the lithium iron phosphate cells that I normally use. So they're going to require cell level fusing to make them safer. Having each individual cell fused will protect the battery if one of them has an internal short. This will blow the fuse for that cell and isolate it from the rest of the pack so that cell can burn itself out without causing surrounding cells to dump power into it and destroy the battery in the process. Cell level fusing can also be done by soldering a thin copper wire to the cells and then to a battery strip where the wire serves as the fuse. But I'm not a big fan of soldering cells so I prefer spot welding battery strips instead. The battery strips that I'm making in this video were modeled after battery hookups nickel strips which you can find on the accessory page of their website for an affordable price and I put a link in the video description in case you're interested or if you don't have access to a machine like the one I'm going to use in this video to make mine. The fuses in battery hookup strips can handle 3 amps continuous and will blow fast at 8 amps. If you need more ampacity then you can layer them like conventional nickel strips as well. I wanted to experiment with different materials and thicknesses to make strips for Hydrane 18650, 21700 and 32650 cells in both standard and staggered spacing configurations and I'll be making them with my B4 JPT MOPA from Commarker which is a 60 watt fiber laser designed specifically for marking, engraving and cutting all types of metals. I made a review video for this machine a while back so if you're interested in learning more about it or getting one for yourself then you can find those links in the video description as well. Using battery hookup strips for reference, I started making mine by first modeling them in CAD software. I'm using SketchUp for this, but any CAD software that can export 2D DXF files will do the job. First I drew a series of circles for spot welding the strips and to form the fuse wire. Then I copy pasted them to form a strip with 4 rows in 2 columns spaced the standard 20.2mm apart for 18650 cell holders. In this case I'm starting with 0.1mm thick copper and the fuse wire will be 1.5mm wide which should be able to handle around the same 3 amps continuous that battery hookups nickel strips can handle. But I'll have to test that later to know for sure and establish a benchmark for making thicker strips. After connecting the fuses into one part with a border and chamfering the sharp corners, I exported the drawing to scale in DXF format and then imported it into Lightburn software to prep it for the engraver. If you have your own engraver and are new to Lightburn, then I recommend checking out their tutorials on their YouTube channel. After positioning, I open cuts and layers and set the laser speed at 5mm per second, the power at 40%, the frequency at 20kHz, the pulse width at 200 nanoseconds, and the number of passes at 2 before securing a copper sheet in a metal sheet holder, positioning it under the laser and clicking start. The sheet holder helps to keep thin sheets from warping too much and throwing the laser out of focus. The power probably could have been a few points higher without overheating the copper, but the waste material popped out without any trouble and the strips turned out great nonetheless. 
So I switched out the 110 millimeter lens in the laser head for the 200 millimeter lens to expand the work area and moved on to cutting some 4x4 and 4x8 strips. I kept most of the settings the same except I increased the power from 40 to 60% to see if I could cut them with just one pass, but I did end up overheating the copper in a few spots. I think somewhere between 40 to 50% power would be ideal for this material and this machine in particular. After cutting a bunch of thin copper strips, I decided to try cutting some thicker strips out of 0.8mm thick aluminum for connecting 38120 headway cells, which are the safer lithium iron phosphate type and have screw ends for the connections instead of requiring spot welding. The settings that I used for these were 5mm per second for speed, 90% for power, 20kHz for frequency, 200 nanoseconds for pulse width, and 30 passes. There's a bit of a misconception online that aluminum isn't a suitable material for electrical connections because it corrodes, but that's not entirely true. Copper has much better conductivity than aluminum, but it's also a lot more expensive when it comes to making big strips and bus bars like this, and that can add up to hundreds of dollars for a large Emoto battery. The truth is that almost every breaker panel in every building in America will have some connections to aluminum components, like the bus bar for neutral connections. The key is using the right type of aluminum alloy, which is usually 6061T6 because it has the best corrosion resistance and strength, and preparing the surface before making the connection so that it's clean when mating them. Protective coatings like red varnish can also be applied after if it's in a humid environment. These turned out really nice as well. This machine is capable of cutting material that's up to twice as thick, which I discovered when I had to make a 200mm snap ring to fix the hydraulics in my father's bulldozer using 1.5mm thick hardened steel, so it's more than capable of cutting thick enough strips to suit almost any battery using any of the common battery strip materials like nickel, copper, brass, zinc, or nickel plated steel. As I mentioned before, it can also mark, engrave, and 3D emboss almost any metal as well as other materials. So if that interests you, then be sure to check out the review video for it. But that's it for this video. I put download links for these files in the video description too, in case any of you have access to a fiber laser and want to give this a try yourselves. As I mentioned, mine is a 60 watt machine, so you might need to use more passes than I did depending on how powerful your laser is. But anything that's rated for 10 watts or higher should do the job. 
I'm going to make more samples from various thicknesses ranging from 0.1 up to 0.3 millimeters, and in the next video we'll put some current to them and see what it takes to get the fuses to blow, and how much they can handle without creating too much heat for continuous use. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.